So this is the cartridge extender that I ordered on eBay. And I've soldered about 20 wires to it. I'm gonna ignore the expansion pins. And I've ignored the first two pins on each side because amongst them there's the ground and there's the extra voltage. So I'm not even gonna take any chance. It's fine. That's, a, that, that's how you do it, right? You just put some tape on it. I cannot bring thing closer. Okay, so the monopoly cartridge is going in. Ugh. Is it still booting first? My second corruption controller is like really different. I have five resistor nubs that are serial, serially linked together and there is a button that is supposed to reset the NES. But Phil, how do you route all of that to the NES? The answer is through an USB cable. Very, very safe. Why, hello, it is me, Phil, from the future. The footage you're about to see uh, shows the prototype of what ultimately becomes the SNES cart interface. Nice little novelty that I built uh, for the sole purpose of having an interface to corrupt SNES. Uh, as you can see, this is essentially just a Japanese Super Famicom converter that would allow people to prop a cart on it, and then you would insert that thing in, in your Super Famicom. So what I've done here is I created a thing that gives you an interface to somewhat short circuit the pins of uh, the cartridge. Now, in order to do that, I, I've been using uh, the uh, hardware NES corruptor that I previously made. This is the hardware NES corruptor version two. This one exposes the CPU and the RAM uh, in uh, three different connectors, but we're not using this. Uh, what we're using is uh, essentially just the probes and the USB connector, which I use to connect the controller. A bit convoluted, but it works. A bit more information in case someone would like to replicate this. The NES corruptor is essentially just IDE cables making an interface to uh, various chips on the PCB. I did solder the IDE cables under where the chips are sitting on the PCB. This allows me to essentially have a way to output the whole thing from the front and in this version I have minimized the impact by removing some plastic. This allows me to still keep the, me the loading mechanism somewhat functional. For the Super Nintendo card the schematics is very straightforward. These are simply just lines from the top to the bottom. The idea of this connector is that it would bypass the whole region lock mechanism. As you can see here, the Super Nintendo cart has little notches on the back to prevent you from inserting Japanese carts, which I had to, uh, well, drill in there. The, the American cart is just too big to fit in the slot, so thanks to that, it, it does give me a bit of leeway for the cable to exit from the console. Good thing. And now for the rest of the video, my first impression of using this device uh, on my Super Nintendo. Enjoy! Zero means no resistance, right? Zero means no resistance. Okay, that works. I'm gonna introduce the probes in this nest and we will see. If I can get ROM corruptions using that. There's pixels! There's pixels badly drawn! We've got. Yes! Wow! It's made for being able to put SNES cartridges on a Japanese. <laughs> okay. Oh! Excuse me? Excuse me! Oh. Oh. It. Oh. Oh! <laughs> oh. Oh. Password? 
Wow, that was a nice blast mag. Mmm. 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 Okay. Wait, th there's still activity here. There's still things. Uh, no joke. I thought I was gonna. I, I was about to stream myself frying my childhood SNES. Wait, what? Uh, th did you see that? It was like one frame. Ready? Re ready? Yes! Yes, we are ready! Um. Oh, the. Huh! <laughs> <laughs> Wily? That. Is that in the game? That's not in the game! What? Oh. I almost touched a thing. Like. Ah! Ah! Uh, uh, huh? Y y y yes? Y yes? Th this is this is the game plan I'm looking for? Oh, the lag. What the fuck? This is amazing. Whoa! I need to sit or something. I'm gonna pick up a chair. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Whoa, whoa! No! No! The knockback was infinite! Oh. J jumping, that's a... Uh, that's a DLC, apparently, or something like that. Excuse me? Still, still a good result, somehow. Uh, ah, shit. Stream kept on going with no commentary. This uh, following corruption shows uh, 3D uh, polygons being messed up. Uh, these are being generated by Mega Man X2's CX4 chip, uh, built in the cartridge. Some kind of a primitive uh, super fix kind of thing, but way cheaper. It only does wireframes. Mega Man X and Mega Man X2 uh, do corrupt similarly, uh, although I cannot really recommend this method of corruption because it is so crashy. You even have to lower, uh, I mean, increase the resistance while uh, you're in a loading zone to prevent it from crashing. That is the only way to keep on going further in the game. Mega Man 7 is even worse. It's, it's really hard to corrupt and get effects. Th this was the best I got from it.